welcome to this lecture. Uh, today we are going to start a very uh, interesting topic that is physical ergonomics. So, it is having a uh, very much important, in fact, uh, 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 heavy weightage, if we can say, uh, uh, because uh, this particular uh, physical ergonomics is related to our body itself. So, uh, all of us uh, do work. So, in context with that, uh, a large number of occupation uh, requires the expenditure of uh, energy and uh, we, and uh, since it is a matter of body, so we must uh, be aware of the facts and uh, the internal mechanism that is happening inside our body when we perform a particular task. So, in context with that, uh, I am going to start this physical ergonomics, I am sure that you will find interest in this particular topic uh, that is a sub part of uh, applied ergonomics part, uh, applied ergonomics uh, course. So, in that uh, we will be covering uh, human uh, physiology, uh, in this particular section uh, we will be covering the human physiology part and uh, muscular efforts as well as work physiology. So, these uh, three uh, we will uh, try to finish uh, within this lecture. So, before uh, going into deep uh, 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 of these all uh, these topics, so we must uh, 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 be aware of the fact that uh, energy uh, requirement is there in order to perform any physical task. So, uh, and every job uh, requires uh, 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 some sort of work activity. So, this manual labor is, is a primary uh, work activity in industries. Uh, industries uh, uh, may be uh, any construction industry, agriculture, mining and irrespective of any, uh, any specific uh, task oriented industry, uh, a manual labor is required. So, uh, and that uh, the, the significant amount of uh, work includes uh, lifting of any object, carrying uh, one particular object and transporting from one place to another and other manual handling task uh, which involves parts, packaging, materials and contain, uh, containers and some sort of repetitive work that we need to perform. Uh, in a particular job. So, uh, this particular section is dealing with the how human body responds to physical work activity as well as the possible requirement in the form of energy to perform any task. And that task is uh, in, the in the form of physical efforts. So, in this way you will be uh, able to correlate uh, with what is the requirement in terms of energy, nutrients and uh, what uh, uh, a particular uh, in order to perform a particular task. So, first we will start with human physiology. So, uh, in that also uh, we will try to cover this introduction uh, about uh, this uh, physiology, um, some sort of musculoskeletal system, uh, its description and uh, the basics of metabolism and uh, these two topics uh, we will be covering in the next lecture. So, uh, today itself we will try to cover this introduction and musculoskeletal systems and uh, metabolism. So, uh, as far as introduction to the physiology is concerned, so it is uh, we can define as a branch of biology that is concerned with the vital process of living organisms and how their constitute tissues and cells function. So, uh, this study is important uh, because uh, any kind of work uh, basically uh, the physical work requires expenditure of uh, physical energy. 
So uh, much of the foundation of the knowledge in human physiology was provided by animal experimentation. Due to the frequent connection between form and function, physiology and anatomy are interestingly linked and are studied in tandem as a part of medical curriculum. So uh, in initial days uh, that uh, all sort of uh, information related to human physiology was uh, obtained by testing over the animal. So uh, uh, the animal was a uh, one of the testing specimen uh, through which we, uh, we were able to predict the functionality of the uh, human body also. So uh, although we are not going to uh, into detail of that, but just for the knowledge, uh, I would like to state you that uh, the based on the taxa studies, the physiology can be discriminated into human physiology, animal physiology, plant physiology, microbial physiology and viral physiology. Based on the level of organization, uh, this physiology is also uh, divided into a cell physiology, molecular physiology, system physiology, organismal physiology, ecological physiology and integrative physiology. Also based on the process that causes physiological variations, developmental physiology, developmental in the sense of uh, uh, human evolve, evolvement and environmental physiology, evolutionary physiology. So that sort of uh, three uh, 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 categories uh, in which that uh, physiology is uh, divided and based, uh, uh, based on these topics that physiology is used to uh, be studied. Also based on the ultimate goal of the research, this it is discriminated into applied physiology and non-applied physiology. So in any case, we are uh, going to discuss about uh, the physiology uh, which is relevant to the ergonomic part. So uh, we will now discuss about the work physiology. So basically this physiology uh, studies on the physiological effects of the workload, this work physiology and uh, uh, this workload uh, is uh, consisting of the physical uh, workload as well as mental uh, workload and exposure to occupational hazards. So assessment of fatigue and cardiovascular responses that also uh, uh, the matter of study and uh, that study comes in this uh, work physiology part. It also assesses the adverse health effects of the work performance and exposure to occupational hazards uh, which may be cardiovascular abnormalities, neurovegetative system dysfunction, biological cycle and reproductive functional disorders. So uh, by continuous and by repetitive uh, work, uh, we may be exposed to several kind of diseases uh, in either of the cases, whether we are excessively doing uh, some particular work for a prolonged period of time or if we are doing nothing and just sitting idle without performing any physical task and just involving in cognitive activities like uh, some uh, just just uh, you are doing some mental processing and uh, rest of the part is doing nothing uh, as an external uh, effort. So in both cases you are going to, to make uh, your life troublesome uh, and uh, going to face some, uh, some sort of abnormalities in the form of uh, these given disorders. So this, this work physiology also includes uh, the experimental studies on uh, physiological reactions to selected occupational hazards. Basically this occupational hazards is related to the, uh, to the hazards that, uh, that you face uh, when uh, perform any task in an organization. So related to the, uh, it is basically it is related to the industry and uh, we will, uh, uh, we will discuss in detail in, uh, in, in an additional topic which is named as occupational ergonomics in a, a later time of this course. So now uh, the question arises that uh, since we are discussing about the physiology, so uh, what do ergonomists do with this physiology? So what is the task of ergonomist uh, in this uh, physiological activities? So uh, what it does? It does the assessment of impact of physical workload 
on the musculoskeletal system in different occupations. I will uh, tell you the what this particular musculoskeletal system is all about. And uh, uh, the second is ergonomic evaluation of work post tools and machinery. It also does uh, the experimental studies on an ergonomically optimal design and construction of work post. And it also gives expertise for uh, governmental agencies setting hygienic standards for work performance, workload, design and construction of work post as well as regulation on prophylactic examinations of workers. So, in a nutshell, those all uh, four tasks that used to be performed by an ergonomist. So, uh, before uh, going to uh, explain the basic part of this physiology and physical ergonomics as well. So, uh, one uh, assignment for you is uh, just to uh, know your body and you have to list out the task and occasions when and whenever you have felt some sort of fatigue and pain. The second task that you have to perform is you have to uh, accumulate the list of the particular part of the body affected and discuss the scientific explanation of internal pain arisen. And you have to also uh, search about the possible solutions of the problem faced. So, in this way you will come to know that uh, how your body reacts to a particular situation as well as if you perform any physical task. Now, uh, about the uh, human physiology. So, uh, as far as this human physiology is concerned, uh, first of all we have to understand what this musculoskeletal system uh, is. So, it basically uh, this uh, human musculoskeletal system is basically the primary actuator for performing physical labor and other activities requiring force and motion. So, it is basically composed of muscles, bones connected by tendons. So, in fact, uh, uh, muscles and bones in the body and uh, tissues connected by them, these tissues are known as tendons. So, energy uh, to perform the physical activities is basically is provided by a uh, phenomena known as metabolism. So, in this uh, uh, lecture, we will also try to understand about the metabolic process of human muscles and as well as how they obtain, how do they obtain the nutrients and oxygen. to do uh, some functions. So, firstly uh, we will uh, briefly describe about the skeletal component of the musculoskeletal system. So, uh, as we know that normal human body contains 206 bones in the human body. The bone and their joints provide the structure of the musculoskeletal system. So, uh, there are uh, various bones uh, and which have different functions also. So, uh, function of some bones is to provide protection of vital organs. So, uh, the principal examples are the skull that protects the brain. And the rib cage, that is one of the most important part in our body that protects our lungs, liver and heart. And most of the other bones uh, provide a framework for the physical activities. Other bones includes uh, like bones 
in arm and leg. The bones in the body are connected to each other at their joints by means of ligaments. Bones and in fact bones of the body are connected to each other with the ligaments by means of ligaments. So, now uh, our main purpose is to understand the basic mechanism. So, uh, we need to know about the various joints which are present in our body. So, now we will discuss about the various joint types for our body movement because uh, as an engineer we must be aware of the various joints which are responsible for our body movements. So, in that series uh, there are uh, there are basically uh, three principal types of joints. The first kind of joint is ball and socket joint which you can uh, visualize with the help of this figure. So, this is ball and socket joint. Second kind of joint is pivot joint. So, example of this pivot is this one. You can easily visualize with the help of this figure and third kind of joint is hinge joint. So, uh, exactly uh, in the human body where these particular joints are playing their roles. So, shoulder and hip joints are the examples of ball and socket joint, elbow and knee acting as a pivot joint and wrist and ankle joints are hinge joint. So, uh, as a as a knowledge as a uh, uh, as a knowledge you can say that ball and socket joints can apply greater force than pivot joint and a pivot joint can apply greater force than hinge joint. So, of uh, so these are all the uh, ball and socket pivot and hinge joint and uh, as far as the other description of uh, these joints are concerned. So, this hinge joint as you can see from this figure that it this particular hinge joint allows only one movement in one plane. So, and is termed as a uniaxial also. This uh, as far as this pivot joint is concerned, this pivot joint also allows movement in one plane only. This particular part can move uh, to and fro uh, sorry uh, in the top uh, in the uh, in the top to bottom and vice versa. Uh, so, this particular uh, joint is also uniaxial. So, basically this pivot joints are located at the superior and inferior radio ulnar joint and uh, Atlanta Atlanta oak axial articulation. This particular hinge joint is located uh, like uh, uh, this particular hinge joint in the body are the uh, interphalangeal joints of the phalanges in the foot and hand. in Fulton. There are other joints also like uh, condylar joint, ellipsoidal joint, saddle joint, So, but in fact uh, these are uh, located in various parts of the body. Uh, so, the uh, each and every joint is having some sort of degree of freedom. 
So this ball and socket joint is having a degree of freedom as 3. As far as shoulder joint is concerned and uh, as far as knee joint is concerned, so this knee is having a 2 degree of freedom and uh, this particular in fact uh, if we could uh, say the example of this particular uh, joint, so saddle joint is located in your thumb which is having 2 degree of freedom. As far as ellipsoidal joint is concerned, so wrist is uh, the kind of example that you can take and it is also having a degree of freedom too. Condyloid joint uh, is located in the knee, so that is also a degree of freedom as a 2. And uh, as far as hinge joint is concerned, this is the ankle is the lively example, uh, this is only uh, having a degree of freedom as 1. So in this way, these are the brief description of the major joints of the body, type of joints and uh, some sort of degree of freedom that is uh, being provided by the mother nature itself to the human body. Now uh, we will move to the next topic that is muscle activity. So as uh, uh, you are aware that uh, every uh, heavy function or any physical effort is uh, uh, involving this muscles activity. So uh, we will uh, we will also have to uh, be aware of the various facts and uh, functioning of these skeletal muscles. So uh, in that muscle activity uh, uh, basically uh, before going into detail let us have some knowledge about this muscles in the human body. So uh, in fact this muscles in the human body are of three types, cardiac muscle, second is smooth muscle and third kind of muscle is skeletal muscle. So this cardiac muscle is the, is the heart muscle that performs the pumping function for the cardiovascular system. So cardiac muscle is a heart muscle. This smooth muscle uh, is normally found in our intestine and uh, blood vessels as well. So we can in a in a summarized uh, manner, we can write it as a smooth uh, muscles in intestine as well as and blood vessels. And uh, as far as this skeletal muscle is concerned, this is our uh, main interest uh, of a study that provides uh, power in fact we, we can say power uh, for uh, for accomplishing the physical efforts so in this way uh, this is the uh, brief discrimination of muscles in human body so these are three types first is cardiac muscle second is a smooth muscle third is a skeletal muscle so uh, our uh, main interest uh, is lying in the understanding of a skeletal muscle uh, which is providing which is providing uh, power power uh, for uh, force and motion in the musculoskeletal system so uh, there are few points that have added so there are approximately 400 skeletal muscles in our body so this uh, uh, comprises of 40 percent of the human body and weight and it also provides power for force and motion in the musculoskeletal system. Blood vessels and nerves distributed throughout the muscle tissue to deliver fuel and provide feedback. 
Skeletal muscles are connected to the bones by tendons which consist of fibrous tissues that transmits force and motion exerted by the muscle contraction. So, a skeletal muscle function by contracting between the bones to which it is attached and contraction occurs when the muscle is activated in response to impulses uh, from the body uh, from the body's central nervous system. Uh, in fact, when we talk about this muscle contraction, it uh, does not mean that uh, when we talk about uh, muscle contraction, it does not mean that uh, muscle has become shorter. It actually this particular contraction uh, refers uh, to, uh, to a some sort of physical uh, physiological condition of the muscle when it is activated. So, again uh, since uh, it is of our interest, so muscle contraction we can, we can also divide it into some parts. So, this uh, skeletal muscle contraction again it is of three types. Since it is directly related to performance uh, and uh, performing physical efforts, so we need to have some basics of muscle contraction. So, in context with that we are extending our knowledge towards this particular topic. So, muscle contraction is of three types. The first uh, type is concentric muscle which is this concentric uh, muscle contraction in which the muscle becomes shorter when it contracts. Second is eccentric muscle contraction. in which uh, muscle elongates when it contracts and uh, third kind of uh, this muscle contraction is isometric muscle contraction in which muscle length stays the same when it contracts. And uh, uh, now the main point uh, towards which we are uh, uh, going is that uh, uh, that can be cleared by this uh, the coming sentence that muscle contraction is enabled by the conversion of chemical energy into mechanical energy. This conversion process is known as a phenomena named as metabolism. So, basically uh, this particular metabolism is nothing but the sum of biochemical reactions that basically occur in uh, cells of a uh, living organisms. The main purpose of this metabolism is to provide energy for vital process and assimilate new organic material into the body. So, this particular metabolism process can be uh, uh, can be uh, can be analyzed or can be viewed as a energy rate process. So, here uh, the story of metabolism goes like uh, it can be defined as a sum of the biochemical reactions that occur in the civil uh, cells of living organisms. Its function is to provide energy for vital process and activities including muscle uh, contraction and second is assimilate new organic material into the body. So, this metabolism can be viewed as an energy rate process. that is uh, it is defined as the since it is in the rate defined as a rate. So, amount of energy we can uh, define as a amount of energy since it is rate. So, we can define as a per unit time 
at which chemical energy contained in food is converted into mechanical energy thereby uh, forming new organic matter so in ergonomics the uh, this particular energy is uh, defined in kilo calorie and corresponding uh, energy rate corresponding energy is expressed in kilo calorie per minute. So, uh, this kilo calorie and kilo calorie per minute can be converted to other measures of energy and energy rate by means of equivalence, so, but in the ergonomics uh, and in the the in, in this series of lectures wherever we will be using this energy and energy rate uh, calculation we will be using this unit as an kilo calorie for energy and for energy rate calculation kilo calorie per minute so now uh, the most important point here uh, we are going to discuss that is what are the possible types of metabolism because this possible uh, conversion of energy uh, will decide uh, your course of action and how much uh, you can uh, perform as a task and uh, for that particular task how much energy is required. So, that calculation is coming in this uh, uh, metabolism process and we will now try to understand various metabolism rate and uh, activities related to that. So, the types of metabolism here we are going to discuss and uh, so uh, this particular uh, metabolism can be uh, discriminated as basal metabolism, activity metabolism, digestive metabolism. So, uh, what is this basal metabolism? So, we need to understand this particular topic. So, for that, so basal metabolism is minimum amount of energy. Uh, which is utilized by our body so uh, this is the minimum energy uh, min minimum amount of energy which is utilized by our body in resting condition or when body is in rest, in rest condition and especially when uh, there is no digestive activity. That particular energy is known as basal metabolism. So, uh, uh, in other words, uh, since uh, this is the minimum amount of energy which is required in order to just sustain the body. It is not involving in any kind of digestive activity or in, uh, in any physical activity. So, this kind of activity is known as basal metabolism. This is just to sustain our body uh, and uh, uh, for in order to sustain our body, so only the circulatory, circulatory and respiratory functions uh, need to be uh, conducted uh, within the body. 
So, the energy used only to sustain the vital circulatory and respiratory functions that particular energy is known as basal metabolism. Now, uh, the second kind of metabolism, metabolism is activity metabolism. So, that particular uh, activity metabolism is energy associated with uh, physical activity. So, here uh, energy uh, associated with physical activity is known as activity metabolism and uh, this particular uh, uh, as, as a physical activity you can take any example uh, let us say if you are playing any sport or involving any physical activity. So, uh, the example uh, you can take as any kind of manual work or sports and other activities where exactly you perform physical actions. The third kind of uh, metabolism is the digestive metabolism. So, here uh, the energy used for digestion whenever you intake a uh, food. So, uh, body starts uh, functioning and uh, it uh, provides you energy to the to digest that particular food. So, here uh, if you combined these three uh, metabolic rate in fact, also oh, those were the metabolism and the energy affiliated with that. So, that is known as uh, let us say this uh, basal, uh, basal metabolic rate, activity metabolic rate and uh, digestive metabolic rate. So, here if you combine uh, these three uh, metabolism. Uh, so, uh, as, a, as a combination of that we can uh, define as a total metabolic rate and uh, that we express as a TMRD and since if we are talking uh, if, if we are talking the total metabolic ro uh, rate in the course of whole day, the one day of what kind of uh, activity that has been performed and if you want to calculate the energy rate corresponding to that. So, you will have to uh, put small d uh, over this TMR. So, the TMR d is known as total in fact total daily metabolic rate. So, this is uh, uh, expressed as a TMR and since uh, this particular small d is is is, uh, is uh, put for uh, one day, one day activity. So the TMR as a combination of uh, all the activities is BMR plus AMRD plus DMRD. So TMR is the total daily metabolic rate, which is expressed in kilocalorie per day. And uh, this BMR is the daily basal metabolic rate, which is also expressed in kilocalorie per day. AMRD is daily activity metabolic rate, and DMRD is a daily digestive metabolic rate that is also expressed in kilocalorie per day. So, uh, now uh, if you want to calculate uh, uh, our metabolic rate, so the basic metabolic rate of an individual depends on the person's weight. So, this particular uh, in fact BMR is depending on the person's weight gender and is age. Also, uh, it, uh, it this particular BMR is depending on other factors like uh, heredity and percentage of the body fat. So, for our purpose, uh, we will use uh, uh, the particular uh, these values uh, for weight and gender and uh, then apply age correction depending on the situation and depending on the person to person clarification. So, here uh, as an as an reference we are taking uh, uh, two things first for male. So, let us say for a 20 year old male. So, BMR uh, per kilogram will be 1 kilocalorie per hour per kilogram of a body weight 
and for a 20 years old female so bmr per kilogram we will be taking as 0.9 kilocalorie per hour per kilogram of the body weight so and uh, as well as one the correction factor we have to include as far as in order to calculate any basal uh, metabolic rate so correction factor we have to also take care in mind uh, like as a person ages his or her basal metabolism rate declines slowly so uh, as the person uh, so age uh, advances so it's his or her basal metabolism rate declines slowly so the age correction is simply to subtract 2% from the preceding values for each decade above 20 years this particular sentence we are going to implement in our numericals which uh, we are going to solve in the next slide so that the understanding of this whole concept could be developed so now uh, based on the uh, previous fundamentals and concepts that we have discussed now we are going to solve a particular numerical that is completely dependent uh, on the theory that we have covered so now uh, suppose uh, you have been told to calculate the daily base cell metabolism rate for a let's say 35 year old woman who weighs 130 pound so what will be your approach in order to solve this particular equation this particular question so now uh, this since uh, this particular uh, woman is 35 year old uh, woman so now recall the just uh, uh, made sentence that as a person ages his basal metabolism rate declines slowly so the age correction is simply to subtract 2 percent from the preceding values for each decade about 20 years so now what we need to do is since uh, uh, since she is uh, uh, we can say that 1.5 decades older than 20 years so here uh, for since it's a, she is a female so for a 20 years old female so bmr is 0 0.9 kilocalorie per hour per kilogram of the body weight so this particular value we will take as well as the age correction that we will also take into consideration so now uh, we have to adjust uh, its uh, according to the uh, his uh, her age so she is uh, 1.5 decades older than 20 years so age correction will be one point five times like it's a two percent so point zero two which is equal to point zero three since she is one point five decades older than twenty years it is simply like twenty plus 1.5 decade mean 10 into 10 times so 20 plus 15 equals to 35 so this sentence is just uh, made by this particular thing so that now uh, this particular 1.5 uh, we have uh, applied as a 1.5 times 0 0.02 is a 0 0.03 so now adjusted bmr will be adjusted BMR per kilogram value will be since uh, since she is a woman so 0 0.9 is the uh, uh, is the actual uh, for a 20 years old female uh, BMR value and uh, since we have to subtract it with this value so the value is coming uh, something uh, if you will calculate to something will come out so this is like kilocalorie per hour per kilogram of body weight so now uh, since since uh, her weight is uh, 130 uh, pound so we need to convert it into kilogram so since uh, 1 kg equals to 2.2 pounds 
So uh, the, it's his uh, her weight will be if you convert it uh, from one pound uh, from this pound to kilogram. So you will be getting uh, equivalency of fifty nine kg. And uh, now if you are talking about the daily bills uh, daily uh, basal metabolism rate, so we have to uh, multiply it by by twenty four. Uh, because one day carries uh, this 24 hours so now so bmr uh, for uh, on the daily basis will be something like 0 0.873 into uh, her weight that is 59 since uh, we have to remove these things so uh, we have to accordingly multiply those options like in a kilogram and uh, uh, since daily activity we have to consider so 24 we have to multiply with this uh, particular uh, uh, digits so the lump sum amount we are getting as a 1 2 3 8 kilo calorie so in fact uh, this can be converted into uh, the equivalence bmr value per minute also so you just have to divide uh, by a number of minutes in 24 hours period so if you want to calculate it uh, in minutes so that correction you can take as 1238 upon uh, uh, something 24 into 60 into 60 so that you will get as 1440 and that uh, the value will be uh, you will be getting as uh, something 0 0.86 kilocalorie per minute so energy rate associated with activity metabolism uh, is a uh, uh, essential to calculate in order to have your pro proper uh, body functioning so now uh, the again top uh, the next topic which we are going to cover is biochemical reactions and uh, uh, in metabolism so uh, so before uh, uh, going into detail about the various nutrient cons contents and the various uh, uh, functions in the body and common food sources as well as the energy related to particular uh, 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 particular source uh, particular source so uh, let us consider a uh, process by which uh, the human body converts uh, the food into muscle activity so the source of chemical energy for metabolism is the food that is ingested and digested by the body so uh, it requires uh, primary food nutrients so those food nutrients are carbohydrates proteins and lipids so uh, uh, there is an energy uh, associated with these uh, uh, food categories and uh, those are uh, this particular carbohydrate is having a uh, 4 kilo calorie per gram as an energy this protein is having uh, energy as a 4 kilo calorie per gram the proteins uh, in fact this lipid is having the highest as a 9 kilo calorie per gram so these are basically three basic nutrients in food with uh, this uh, calories content and uh, generally what does this uh, carbohydrate uh, does it converts uh, it uh, basically this carbohydrate is converted into glucose and glycogen so the primary source of energy muscle brain nervous system and rbc and it also uh, this particular carbohydrate helps in regulating fat metabolism so the common food sources for this particular carbohydrates are fruits juice milk rice potato so the, that uh, uh, can be obtained from some other sources also and the protein as we are aware uh, that uh, this particular uh, protein is helping as helpful in body uh, for uh, tissue growth and maintenance of hormones enzymes and antibody production so antibody is required uh, in order to tackle in order to uh, uh, fight for uh, external uh, matters that is antigen so the antibody is created in the body itself and again this production of the antibody is also essential which is performed with the help of proteins 
and uh, the another kind of uh, category is lipids so uh, it all it uses uh, the use in energy source for the body surrounds and uh, cushions vital organs helps in maintaining body temperature and it is essential in uh, essential in vitamin a d k e so this is the sum of the uh, basic nutrients in the food with some sort of calorie content and uh, functions in the body so these are the functions which we have uh, just uh, listed down and basically this carbohydrate if you are uh, talking about this conversion of glucose and glycogen so let's have a uh, some uh, brief uh, overview about this uh, functioning of this carbohydrate so this carbohydrate is basically an organic compound as you uh, are aware of uh, the fact that this uh, uh, this is a organic compound having a general chemical formula of cx h2o y and it is simply uh, transformed into two simpler uh, sugars uh, it is glucose the chemical formula is c6h12o6 and uh, the second kind of uh, sugar is uh, glycogen whose chemical formula is c6h10o5 m6 so this particular glycogen is stored in the muscles this is stored in muscles and changed into glucose wherever it is required whenever it is required changed into glucose so this is in a brief uh, this uh, about the carbohydrate functioning now uh, this protein basically this protein is broken down into amino acids so uh, the amino acids are uh, again these are the organic acids organic uh, we mean that it consists of uh, carbon hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen so uh, this organic acid uh, which contains uh, which contains amino group that is nh2 and carboxylic group that is coh so these two groups carboxylic group and uh, as well as this lipid is concerned so it is uh, converted uh, into fatty acids and glycerol so lipid include this uh, lipid uh, in fact this lipids include fats and are converted into fatty acids so this fatty acids uh, meaning thereby this acetic acids that is uh, ch3coh and glycerol this is c3h Eight, oh, three. So, uh, I hope uh, this uh, has uh, uh, clarified about the metabolism, biochemical reactions, and various food categories and their energy uh, content. And uh, now, with this, I am uh, uh, going to uh, close this lecture. And uh, I hope uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, things uh, apart from engineering you have been uh, uh, gone through and uh, i hope you have found some what interest in that because it is related to your human body and it is uh, our duty to uh, know the various facts which are happening inside our body and uh, so that we could live uh, our uh, life uh, disease free free of disease and uh, with greater uh, with uh, uh, with certain longevity and uh, so uh, i'm going to uh, 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 close this lecture uh, before that i just uh, have a fact uh, for uh, refreshing you 
for your refreshing purpose that uh, not that all microorganisms are bad you have between 2 and 5 pounds of bacteria living inside you much of it in the intestines as scientists have begun to understand what that microbial life is up to it has become clear that your internal microbiome is a big part of what keeps you healthy so uh, another thing that if you were a navy commander how would you train your subordinates to make them adapt to the environment in the submarine four months uh, just just uh, have a brief history of human physiology since we have started with physiology let us have uh, some uh, some facts and uh, um, things like uh, Walter Cannon and Hans Selye used animal studies to establish the earliest scientific basis for the study of stress so that animal uh, we, we used to take help of animals in order to uh, have uh, uh, some theory on which we can relate with the human physiology so they measured the physiological responses of animals to external pressures such as heat and cold prolonged restraint and surgical procedures then extrapolated from these studies to human beings subsequent studies of stress in humans by Richard Rahe and others established the view that stress is caused by distinct measurable life stressors and further that these life stressors can be ranked by the median degree of stress they produce and uh, thus stress was traditionally conceptualized to be a result of external inserts beyond the control of those experiencing the stress. So more recently however it has been argued that external circumstances do not have any intrinsic capacity to produce stress but instead their effect is mediated by the individual's perception capacity understanding so this is brief uh, overview just for the sake of your knowledge and uh, the final gravity is uh, the exercise is a great way to reduce stress so that's all for now thank you